So what it is, we'll try to drive this momentum equations because uh, we're going to use it for almost all of the problems. So initially we'll uh, have a discussions regarding the Newton's second law of motions. We all know the Newton's second law of motion. This is A equal M A and we discussed this earlier. So A is the accelerations and M is the mass. So acceleration, you know, it is at the rate of change of the velocity. So this is here, the rate of change of the velocity. So what we can say, um, we can put M here and it, this is the derivative term d d t over m b so m b you all know this m b this is actually the momentum the mass and the velocity the multiplication of the mass of the and the velocity this is actually the linear momentum of the system so what we can say this newton's second law you know it's telling about you know the rate of change of the momentum it is equal to the sum of the forces acting on this so in other words, uh, we can we can say this is you know uh, the Newton's second law of motion. So we can state it like um, this is actually the linear momentum uh, formula. Actually, we discussed it earlier. So what we can say here is the rate of change of the linear momentum is sum of uh, or e is equal to the uh, sum of all the external forces acting on this of the system. Anyway, so this is the expressions we already know now if we know that the the density and the velocity maybe this is variable it may change from point to point within the system so we have a system so the density and the velocity it could change from point to point so then newton's second law of motion can be expressed it like this it is d over dt and the rho v dv we just use the formula mass you know mass here it is equal you know the density and the rho dv anyways so now here you can say this is rho v dv this is the momentum of the differential element dv okay or if we say the mass delta m equal rho dv okay mass equal rho dv anyways so now these equations okay this equation it is given mass for a solid or a fluid okay and it is limited use in fluid mechanics since we usually use most of the flow system like as a control volume so that we usually do so that means we cannot use it for you know all problems so now to make it easier we will use a new concept this is called the Reynolds transport theorem it is uh, in chapter 4 in your, from your book, uh, you will see the Reynolds transport theorem, especially for a moving um, system and a fixed control volume. It, it is, you, know, you can just go to that, it is uh, section 4.6 from your book. So from the Reynolds transport theorem, we know this formula. This is uh, for the system and we will convert it into the control volume. Here, this B, this is a extensive properties. We, you know the definition of the extensive property. It is, um, you can say the mass, B could be mass, energy, or, you know, the moment. Okay, so B is the extensive property. This small b, this is the intensive property. Intensive property. Okay. So, what we will do, you can see this is for the control, the, this um, is the rate of change of all the, could be any of these properties, okay. This is for the control volume, this is for the control surfaces. So, we will replace this term, in this case, our intense extensive properties, it is actually the moment, mv. So, in the state of b, we replace mp the ex intensive properties here we have the velocity is the intensive property here uh, if you if you are wondering what is the definition of the intensive extensive properties go through the lecture one or two and you will get the little explanation there so we substitute the value b equal v b equal b in the these two 
part of the right hand side then you see we'll get it is ddt mv to the system equal ddt rho v dv and this and you can remember it was the final first term we already obtained uh, if you go through the first video then you see this is uh, the, the body force acting on this um, on the control volume throughout the control volume and this is now the surface forces we got it from the Reynolds transport theorem so that means we can um, say here look the left hand side okay the left hand side of this equation this is equal to sum of the wall forces acting on this control volume so the general form then we can write okay if this is equal to the sum of the wall forces acting on this system so this equal now d d t you see this control volume rho dv for control surface vr dn so this vr this is the relative velocity okay we can calculate this this vr this is actually the average velocity when as the velocity of the control system okay this is the relative velocity to the control surface okay and v it is the fluid velocity v this is the fluid this is the fluid velocity so now we can uh, for the fixed when it is the general one that this is the relative velocity but if we consider a fixed control volume so then we do not need any more relative velocity then it will be just v and you if you look here at this sections so we have rho b br and da if we write it down like this rho you know vr into n da this is we can say this is the mass flow rate through the differential uh, area da anyway so we have got this is the final term for um, a fixed control volume this is sum of a p called this and this so this is sum of all forces this is the rate of change of the linear momentum which is um, it is equal due to the body force and this is the net flow rate you know the net flow rate of the linear momentum out of the control surface by mass flow so this is uh, for the you know control surface this is for control volume so we have got the for the fixed control volume this is the final term um, we actually use for any problem so now here this is some explanation uh, like uh, we have a 80 degree angle elbow um, grounded we have some reaction forces here so the momentum equation we are using uh, actually um, you can see for the support so weight gravity due to the gravity you know weight is acting down a direction this is the reaction force so this is the reaction force fr1 and fr2 you know the gas pressure here gas pressure here this is the con dotted line is the control surface this inside it is control volume so here it consists the f it consists couple of things the pressure force you see the pressure acting here into the area this is the pressure force this is the pressure force what else we have we have the reaction forces okay so also the weight so that's the sum of all forces acting here um, so when we will solve this problem uh, actually uh, you know we will solve some problem like this and then we'll explain actually how to use this in um, and how to apply these equations so now some special cases uh, whatever we showed here this is I you know uh, for the fixed control volume so now for special cases let's say for a steady flow we'll talk about the steady flow so steady flow means if it is the control volume so the mass um, inside the control volume the, uh, the, the moment inside the control volume it will be constant it will not change it has number of inlets number of outlets you can see so it's coming in uh, going out but as it is the fixed control volume for a steady case the what you can say the the mass or the moment inside the control volume it will be fixed so that means it will not change with respect to time but this is actually the rate of change with respect to time in the control volume so what we can say here when it is a steady case then it will be zero for a special case the control volume remains constant okay the amount of moment um, in the control volume remain constant so the rate of change of the moment it is the linear moment it is zero so we'll put this term with zero so that means our you know the moment equation for a steady flow it will be 
this. And if we actually want to calculate the mass flow rate, all right, so then um, what we need to do here, you know, the mass flow rate across the inlet or the outlets, we'll get this expression here, the rho V N DSC, or you can say um, this is um, the average, you know, the finally we can do this uh, calculation, so you can say it is rho average uh, AC. Actually, we need to do some um, comparison with a couple of equations, but I didn't put it here, but I just put the final terms. So the mass flow rate across the inlet or outlet will have these terms. And if we actually know the momentum flow rates for the for a uniform inlet or outlet, this is the final term. So we'll discuss it during the lecture. I actually wanted to show you all the equations here, what we need when you will solve some problems. So that's actually, yeah, this is the most important thing like for a steady flow or when it is a uniform inlet outlet, okay, it will be the case. We'll use the average velocity here. So that's it and we'll discuss it during the